Hello, this is Marcos Patchett, the Nocturnal Herbalist, and today's video is going to be another fairly short one, relatively 10 minutes or so, uh, in which I'm just going to talk about um, astrological prediction. Um, can you do it? Is it ethical? What are the limitations? My thoughts on this were triggered by a uh, comments I saw on Facebook by a former astrological mentor of mine and somebody who um, is quite eminent in the ast astrological profession. Um, and you know, that their, their thought, they were saying that they didn't think prediction in astrology was ever really valid. Um, I mean, I'm paraphrasing, but essentially um, they were expressing a bit of fairly understandable exasperation about people asking them, could you predict whether I'm going to make lots of money? Could you predict whether, when I'm going to get married or if I'm going to be single all my life? Like that kind of thing. Or could you predict my sexuality from the chart? And this person was saying, well, actually, you shouldn't be doing that. And you can't do that with astrology. It's not what it's for. It's for analysis. It's for analysis of character and that kind of thing. I do have some sympathy with that view. Um, in fact, I found myself sort of a bit in the middle here um, because although I am a traditional astrologer, so I use techniques predominantly from sort of medieval era or Hellenic astrology that have been revived and are currently being um, rediscovered and experimented with, if you like. Um, I also, you know, have a, have a modern astrology background. So modern astrology tended to reframe itself in these terms as character analysis. And there are legitimate questions of ethics here about using a scientifically non-valid or non-proven I'm not going to say disproven because see my previous video, it's not disproven, but a scientifically, certainly non-mainstream uh, procedure such as astrology for prediction. Um, but as I've said in my previous video, I do think traditional astrology has the tools to enable prediction at least some of the time. The two major functions of astrology, to my mind, are traditionally one, prediction, and two, analysis, in that order. It was valued traditionally for its ability to predict when certain things were likely to happen. And secondly, for the analysis of those events, either prospectively or retrospectively. And this would have traditionally helped people to uh, diagnose and treat diseases. It was used to help people predict the weather. It was used to help people arrange battle campaigns or travel or that kind of thing. Lots of different uses. But the point is prediction was a major facet of astrology. And I think if you're going to deny that that can even be done out of understandable ethical misgivings or even practical misgivings, then I think you are essentially denying the vast majority of astrology's heritage, which is something that I can't really get behind. Um, but I do think there are important considerations. Now, this really comes down to, to my mind, three philosophical schools. And this is very, what I call my cereal box philosophy understanding of this, to sort of cook it down into a very simplistic form. Um, you've got sort of ancient astrology, very ancient astrology, like roots, Hellenic, Greek astrology, tended to be Stoic, from Stoic philosophy. Essentially, that's a sort of the idea of a mechanistic universe with absolute fate, where everything we encounter is preordained and immutable, and that astrology is a good way of seeing that fate outlined. And of course, that's really two propositions. One, that fate is immutable, and two, that astrology is a valid and um, practical and, and, and functional uh, means of, of seeing that fate. The second philosophical school, uh, and which I belong to, it really, I would place myself roughly in this box, would be something like the, the Neoplatonic, which is very was very on vogue in the Renaissance, which is like, yes, there is fate. Yes, there is, you know, a lot of a lot of what we experience is to some degree or other preordained, but that we have a say in it. This comes down to the alchemical idea of co-creation, where we're not just mechanical sort of clockwork elements, but we're participating in it. So we actually have some say in how things get downloaded from the cosmic mind, if you like. So this is very much part of a, a dualistic model of consciousness, um, what, what, what one would now call 
substance dualism, the idea that there's body and soul and that there's a physical reality and a non-physical spiritual reality which um, pre dated it or predetermines it both actually it's what I call the mind before matter model of consciousness uh, and then the third uh, broad very broad box would be the postmodern notion uh, which is that everything is entirely free will that nothing really is preordained and this really comes out of the physicalist model of reality which is that it's the the matter before mind model based on evolution and then stuff so the nothing exploded and then things accumulated and then evolution happened and then things developed brains and then out of the brains consciousness came and as a result of this uh, really all of that is randomness and we have complete free will uh, I think, and I, I, as I said, I'd put myself in the middle of those models, but it really depends where you, where you place yourself. Now, of course, I'm, I'm aware that there are many more metaphysical reality models than those, and that is a very um, un-nuanced view of fate. But I, I think, for me, that's a good trifecta. That's a good way of sort of dividing things into pure fatalism, participatory fate, and um, pure chance, pure randomness, and free will. I think that predictive power rationally always has to be qualified. And if you look back at the medieval, even the you know, like the medieval and Renaissance astrologers who did predictions, like the famous ones like Bernati and Lilly, they would always write predictions with some kind of qualifier, obviously informed by the religious beliefs of the time or that they had. So something along the lines of God willing, or if God is willing, or if God permits, this will happen. Meaning, well, this is probably what's going to happen, but, you know, there's always that divine intervention thing. There's always this chance that it may not. And very often predictions were written in, in, in a sort of qualified uh, if, if not way. So, for example, and that wasn't getting out of jail free. There was a sense, a, a concrete predictions were made, but they were made in a way that... Um, didn't say absolutely that this will happen. So to give an example, I think, um, I, don't, I can't remember who it was. I don't think it was, I think it was Bernati actually made a prediction about some Italian noble of the day uh, dying from a lance wound to his thigh. But he also said in the same prediction, if this does not happen, then this person will go on to experience this and this and this in the years beyond. So it certainly wasn't an absolute definitive account of death and a very specific prediction. But, and in fact, this is historically, you know, one of those things which documented this guy did die after being injured uh, in battle at that time, at the time that Bonatti predicted. Anyway, the point there is that there's always a qualifier. Um, and I don't think, I think this is legitimate because to my mind, um, one of my favourite books about astrology is a very short book written by the astrologer Bernadette Brady called Astrology, A Place in Chaos, in which she posits the idea that astrology is kind of, if it, if it works, it works in a fractal way. It identifies these repeating patterns in life that while they are chaotic, as in the patterns never actually exactly repeat, there is still an underlying structure, an identifiable um, shape to them. You know, like the Mandelbrot set or whatever, you can go further and further in and the patterns just keep evolving, but there's still a repeating shape, but the detail is always different. So, uh, and one of, one of the things she says, astrology is very good for identifying peaks and troughs or watershed moments when this or that can happen. Uh, another example I have from, from another astrological mentor of mine, Deborah Holding, is uh, she always said astrology is good for knowing when you need to take an umbrella. In other words, if you know that it's going to be raining or if your prediction is that it's going to be bad weather, then you can prepare for it. But what that looks like when you're in the rain may look and feel very different from what you were imagining it would feel like ahead of time. So. I do think, and the, my third thought, and really my final thought on this subject, because this video is going to get too long otherwise, is uh, something I repeat very often, both to students and mainly to myself as a reminder, is that astrology is a context-dependent art. 
once you have a certain amount of context, that implies that things have started coming together in a certain way. So because things have started happening enough to give you a, a situation, then there are already just logically limiting factors in place. So to some degree or other, questionable exactly how, how wide the margins are, some degree of prediction should theoretically be possible. So I think this underlies the possibility of, of astrological prediction. So, and in terms of the ethics, you, you really have to, you know, use your own judgment. So something like predicting death, I personally think it would be very immoral and foolish to predict death for a very healthy uh, individual, uh, you know, just well in advance, look at their birth chart and say, oh, you're going to die at that age. Um, I think, however, it's completely valid to use the traditional length of life techniques and go, well, uh, traditionally, your, your uh, lifespan indicator runs out here. This doesn't mean that you're going to die. It just means that after this sort of age, you might encounter more health problems. So it might be a good idea to look after your health here and here and here and have a look at those those sort of um, these sorts of issues at these times. But I always say to people, don't make really concrete predictions until you have a context. Uh, you've got to really wait until the bus is coming over the hill, until you can see what the situation is 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 becoming before you can start to make uh, really strong predictions. That's not to say that I think it's absolutely impossible. We do know there are historical examples of astrologers who've supposed to have made these really stunning uh, predictions well ahead of time. Um, but I do think for the most part it's unwise for various reasons to do that, uh, particularly when individuals and their um, their own free will are involved. Um, so anyway, I could say a lot more, but this video has already gone on a bit too long. Thank you very much for watching. If you like this sort of thing, please do like this video, please do share it, please do subscribe, and I will hopefully see you in the next one. Thanks for watching. Bye.